Hey crafters, it's me, Jen Evers with Quality Crafts. And welcome back to another live stream. So if you're watching us live today, you're going to notice that hopefully on whatever kind of um, technology you're using, you're going to notice that we have a live chat going on. And that is the Quality Crafts community showing up to support one another, answer questions, and things like that. Hey Jen Marker, thanks for joining us. So if you notice that I'm talking to people and welcoming people and saying hi and stuff like that, it's because on my channel I come in about five minutes earlier. It just depends on the day. Um, and I always start at uh, exactly five minutes after the hour. So if it says that I'm starting a live stream at 2 p.m., uh, it gives you about five minutes to get in, get started. So you don't miss anything in the beginning, and I'll start promptly at 2.05. On Thursday evenings when it's 6 to 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, I would typically start at 6.05. So just so you have that information, if you're watching us archived, you could just skip through all this if you don't want to watch all of the welcoming part, and um, that will solve all your problems. We'll get started on the project at 2.05 today. So hi, Janet and, T and Tamitha and Angela. If you see anybody who has a name that is in blue, that is a moderator, so they're here to keep us safe from spam and scam. So we're always happy to have those around. I'm not sure how many will show up today just because it is Mother's Day, obviously, but there we go. Kelly Lisa's here. Hi, Kelly. Um, so we've got, uh, let's see, Auto Earth, Sabrina, Nina, Linda. Hi, Tammy. Yes, happy Mother's Day. So thanks for joining me if you are coming on your Mother's Day. I realize this is kind of smack dab in the middle of your whole day. We're going to be making this really cool card today, and I'm going to show you how to make it using just basic tools. So that is going to be really cool. Hi, Christy. There's also... Um, if you haven't been on a live stream before, there's typically a few seconds lag. So if you ask me a question and I haven't answered you, don't type it again and again, but make sure you do put it in caps so that I can see it and I can answer it. Uh, sometimes I get to answer question, questions quickly and other times I completely miss them because I'm crafting and creating with you guys. So uh, <clears throat> that's just typical. Another thing is I do tend to... Um, I always bring my favorite drink, so I hope you brought yours as well. But I do tend to take a drink from time to time. Uh, some videos I do more talking than other videos. <laughs> and uh, I take medications, and I have chronic illness just like plenty of viewers do. So you get my point. Um, sometimes I'll be drinking. I hope that you'll be drinking too. I try to not eat or do anything other, you know, distracting things like that, though, to just to respect your space in this crafting area. Oh, Eva, welcome. Hi, Penny. Kelly says, Mother's Day has come and gone in the UK. Hi, Angela. She's got an empty nest, so she's happy to be here. Cheers, guys. I'm using my Revo Max. Love that kind of bottle. Uh... Because it keeps everything cold. So we've had two gorgeous sunny days here in Wisconsin. And it is just beautiful. I just closed the window. There was a nice cool breeze coming through. But also along with the breeze blows in the noise. So if we can get through without having to open the window, that'd be great. But if it gets really hot in here, I'll open it up. You'll just hear um, maybe a little background noise, some birds twittering and things like that. Hi, Raggedy Girl. Thanks for coming. Deanna, hello, Kay Myers. I do typically come on a few minutes early when I can, Kay, yep. Yeah? So, yeah, we literally, it's it's almost literally 2 p.m., but I will start the project at 2.05. That way, those that are going, well, you said you start at 2. Um, 2 to 2.05 will give people plenty of time to come in to make sure that they're in and they don't miss the beginning of the video. We're going to be creating this card today. I'm not going to get started on it immediately, but I do want to talk to you a little bit about the fact that it is Sunday. So this technique, Sunday, is all about showing you how to use your tools to create something or do something that you can use over on the Quality Crafts page. So if you're unfamiliar with that, you want to go over to Facebook to Quality Crafts, find our Facebook group, 
answer the three questions so that I can see that you're not a robot or um, a troll or a spammer or a scammer and let you in because our group is a non-commitment, non-drama group. So there's no participation police. No one's going to boot you out if you're not doing, you know, A, B, or C and all that. Um, so we, we'd love to have you. If you're new, put some little hearts on your screen so that we know that maybe this is your first time or you've just found my channel, things like that. We'd love to see you. Hey, Linda. Hi, Sandy. You're going to notice that if you come back, there's a lot of people that um, come in often. We've got a crafty community building here around the Quality Crafts and Jen Evers channel. So we'd like to welcome you in and have you be a part of that. There's also a store linked to my community. It's called qualitycrafts.com. And uh, it's, some people always ask me, so when you go to qualitycrafts.com, at the very top, teeny tiny little letters are all the little tabs. I've tried to make them bigger. I just don't have, there's just no way to make them bigger. And people kind of miss that. So if you go in the description box below, I'll have my store link. So it goes directly to the store in case you can't find it. There'll be a link to my Patreon. And there'll typically be a link to something on Amazon. Um, I affiliate with Amazon, so I get a little teeny tiny commission if you purchase through them. It doesn't cost you anything. But if you use, use my link, I would greatly appreciate it. And then there's the store where I have budget-friendly tapes and um, mostly tapes. So like ATG tape refills for $2 a roll, um, foam tape if you want to pop up things, and then little bottles to put your glue in like this, this kind of stuff. And then some other stamps and things. And if you haven't already gotten your July, Christmas in July kit, there's only a couple left. I only made 10 in the beginning, and they sold out overnight. So I quickly put together 10 more and they're slightly different than the first one because my supplies are majorly dwindling. But if you want one of those, I would hurry, hurry, hurry. They're going to be gone by the end of today and there won't be any more because I'm, I'm out of stuff. Hi, Tenzert. Oh, my. New Zealand, 7, 7 a.m. here. Frosty morning. Oh, that's so interesting to me. So it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon in Wisconsin, and it's gorgeous. Is, is there clouds? Let me look. Not a cloud in the sky, completely blue. I was out all morning just um, enjoying the day with my husband and shopping, so that was really fun. Hi, Jerry. <laughs> I thought you did whatever you wanted yesterday, Linda. <laughs> you goofball. So we've had two minutes left. With this two minutes, I'd like to say, um, I'd like to just talk and go over the tools that we're using today. For those of you who want to be prepared, you're going to need a gray ink, a, a blue ink, and a brown ink. Okay? Gray, blue, and brown, as you can see on here. I'm going to show you how to hand make these cute little um, shells. So you don't need any die cuts or anything for those. We're just going to hand cut those. Uh, a little bit of twine. And I saved these because... My mother-in-law gives everyone socks every year for Christmas. It's a family tradition. She's passed down from um, their grandparents. And they wrap them in this stuff, so I save it every year. Then you're going to need a bone folder or a stylus, a black marker, a white gel pen. This is not necessary, but it makes the waves stand out. A ruler, a scissors, something to blend with, and I just use... Uh, cheap felt and a tool and then something to make circles with. I'm using this old-fashioned Fisker's uh, template. It's a traceable tool, but if you don't have this, you can use anything like if you have a roll of tape hanging around, you could trace a roll of tape that makes the circle about that big. Things like that. So use your ingenuity and your imagination. Grab some stuff from the kitchen, maybe some small plates. Um, bowls, cups, and find two that are slightly different. So you only need a little variation to make two, one larger circle and one smaller circle. My circles are, we're going to start in one minute, three inches around and two and a half inches around. That's how big my two circles are in case you're wondering. Hi, Donna. Nine oh four PM in Germany. <laughs> I 
<laughs> Sandy wants to know how many before I'll dance today. Well, we've got 37 watching today. I doubt we'll make it to 50. So how about we label it 50 today? If we get 50 watchers on a Sunday, a Mother's Day Sunday, I'll do a dance. <laughs> so it's 205. Let's get started. You're going to need a little cardstock, which I didn't mention. I just feel that cardstock is always kind of a given when you're making cards. And we're going to recreate this card today. I did not make this up. I found this um, on a Google search, and if you're interested, I'm going to uh, add down in the description box, I'll put like a link where I originally found this card. It's slightly different than mine. I just used what I had to kind of, what they call it is card casing. I cased the card and I made it with the supplies that I had to look similar to the card that she had. So the first thing we're going to do is this uh, layer behind it, which looks like pattern paper, Wood, wood grain pattern paper, but we're going to make that. We're going to start off by making these three black lines. I actually used one of these tools, but I'm guessing that a lot of people don't have these. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and give you the measurements. And we're going to use our ruler and our stylus to make these marks. We're going to do it at two and three quarters. Okay, so two and three quarters, and then in between there, we're doing, let's see, one, two, one and a quarter and an eighth, so it's like four, almost four. I'm going to go over these again with you guys, but let me just put the marks down, and then we'll do it with our ruler. So on this end, it's going to be like around four and a quarter. Okay, so if you split the card in half, it's going to be th uh, two and three quarters. So the first mark you're going to want to do with your ruler is two and three quarters. And if you just want to eyeball this, if you don't care where your lines are, then go ahead and eyeball it. I've just got three lines here, one, two, and three. I didn't care whether this piece of wood was wider than this piece of wood versus this one. So if you just want to go ahead and eyeball it, go ahead and do it. But the first one, the first mark is two and three quarters, and then you're going to want to make a mark all the way across. So I'm using a stylus. You could use a bone folder as well and just make a mark. If you want to go ahead and just take your black marker and make that black mark right away, you can. I wanted mine to be a little bit more, um, what do you call it? Like it has a texture so that when I rub my finger over it, you can actually feel the break in the wood there. That's why I'm using the stylus. You don't have to do that. So if you want to skip that part, you can. And then we're, we're just literally splitting this in half. So eyeball it and put it in half. Otherwise, I believe this is like four inches over something like that and then just go straight across your paper same with on this side like maybe an inch and a half to two inches in yeah I probably should have done some major um, measurements but I literally want this to be kind of like a you know get together and just do it kind of thing don't stress about the measurements so these are not perfect if you look I've got like one board that's skinny one board that's fat that kind of thing let it go just do it that way all we're looking for is to have and if I fold this don't fold yours but I'm going to fold mine just so that you can see them better you literally have four panels now see that's a lot easier to see you're just making those marks so that you can see where to swipe your ink so you're going to take that gr light gray ink And I'm just, did I miss any? I don't think I've missed any. Okay, I, I have to open this window, guys. I'm sorry. There's going to be some noise leakage, but there's going to bring in a nice little wind because I am just, it's so warm and gorgeous out, guys, right now. We're going to do the, the swiping. I'm positive I did this in another video, but it's so cool. It's worth sharing again. This one is called Weathered Wood. And it's a, it's a Distress Ink by Tim Holt. So if you're looking for an Amazon link to these, it's in the description box below. And we're just going to go ahead and do the swipe. 
and I'm going to swipe it like this across a couple of times until I like the way it looks. If you want your wood to be really dark, then make it dark. If you want to turn it on its edge here and, you know, have some lines like through your wood, then make the lines. But in each panel, you're going to want to make that swiping motion. And it doesn't matter if you go across panels, that's not a big deal. You're just going to want a few of these swiping motions in each panel. And this is what's going to give us that wood look. And it's so cool. If you want more of a weathered, like, brown wood look, then you wouldn't use gray. You'd use brown. And maybe you want a brown paper underneath. Totally up to you. Take the idea and run. But now I've got these bumps where I made those lines across. I want those to have the black. So I went in after the fact and found the divots and drew them with my black marker. I'm going to do that now. You could do it beforehand. It really doesn't matter. But I'm going to go back in where they were and just draw them in. If you like it without the lines, then don't draw them in. If you think black is too harsh, then make your lines with maybe a gray marker or something that you have laying around. But one of the things about this is that none of us are going to have exactly, exactly the same card. But now you can truly see where my panels are. I've got a larger one down here. I could even maybe make another line right here, like the wood grain went off. So let me just show you that. Like, if I look at that and go, wow, well, I was really hoping for something a little bit different. Maybe I want to add in one more little thing. I'm going to put my divot here, because like I said, I want my card to have some texture there and then I'm going to go in that little divot with my black marker and add another layer. So you could do that as well. You can fix it on as you go, as you go project, whatever you want to do. So that's going to be my bottom layer. <clears throat> the next thing we're going to do is we're going to ink around the whole thing. Hi Shell, you totally made it. I sometimes I get a little more excited about other people joining than maybe other people joining, but <laughs> There are, there are times when I've just had a conversation with someone or they're brand new and they've they've gone out of their way to support me in a different way or they've touched, you know, gotten in touch with me a different way. And then when they come in, I'm like, wow, you came. That's so cool. Um, I just, I had an interaction with Shell today. So for her to show up is really exciting for me. If I want all of you, any of you guys to show up is exciting for me, but I just want you guys to know that. That's where that comes from. So I'm going to pull out a piece of scratch paper here. Just so you can see um, how I'm inking this. And I, I'm just using my regular old felt for this. And I'm going to be go really heavy handed on the corners and then drag it out. Okay? Really, really dark. Like maybe, I'm sorry, walnut stain. I forget myself sometimes what I'm doing here. Walnut stain, in case you're interested. Um, the dark brown. So I'm going to, you know, load up the ink on there. Go really heavy handed in the corner and then spread it out down the edge. You can do it any way you want. If you want to load up yours and do it like this, you can. I want mine to show a little bit more. So I'm going to load it up, do really heavy handed on the corner and then drag it down. So you guys can decide however you want to do that. And then you end up with that really cool panel. I just think it's really super fun when you look at something and you case it and you make it a completely different way. Like, I don't even know how she made her card. I saw it in the Google thing and I went, wow, I like that card. I think I can do that in just a few, with just a few tools that I have. And I just went with it. I just recreated it the best I could with what I had. And I never even looked at how she made hers. So afterwards, I went and dug and tried to find, like, who made that card. Oh, my gosh, we hit 50. No way. All right, so we have to dance. So I have to, so I have to dance when we hit the goal. And it's, somebody said I should whip and nay nay. So we're going to whip and nay nay and whip and nay nay. <laughs> Yay, we made 50. Woo -woo. There's my dance. <laughs> That's crazy, you guys. I would have sworn we would have never made 50 days. That is so funny. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so I missed a tool. I forgot. No, I didn't. Scissors. So instead of using my trendy blah, 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 whatever, what if Penny said it's 70 people viewing before the dance? Well, not on Sunday, though, Penny. Typically, Sundays don't hit that high, so... <laughs> All right, so instead of using a fancy tool to do this um, torn edge, the rough edge here, I'm going to show you how to do it with just a scissor. Be very careful if you're showing this to a child or if you have a child that's there um, working on this today. Using the scissors is a little, little more hazardous, so be very careful. <laughs> um, start on the side like this and just drag it across the paper. And try to support the paper on both sides with your fingers so that it doesn't move around. And then just go back and forth like you're, you know, scraping the paint off of something. And it's okay if it completely, like if I put it sideways and completely cut the paper like that, that's okay. It gives it character and it's really, really cool. So you might want to cut it in a few places on purpose, depending on what, what look you want. Now, when I'm done with this, I leave the white. But if you don't like the white on yours, see, there's another cut. Um, just go ahead and re-ink it brown afterwards. I, I don't want mine to be all brown. I like the white as it comes out, so I'm leaving the white on mine. Oop, there's another rip. So the rips, like I said, leave, give it character. I'm going to leave them. I've got one. Looks like I've got three of them. And then I'm going to just dump out the stuff that falls off when you do that. So that is a super easy part. And we're done with the bottom of the card already. The card base. Yeah, I don't like re-inking the edges because the white shows. I like the look of that. So I don't re-ink mine, Tensert. But everyone should go with their with their um, artist soul and do whatever works for you and what you like the look of. So on this card that I originally did, you'll notice that I did not re-ink. I left the white. It uh, it plays, from in my mind, that white brings out the white in the waves and kind of makes a balance to my card. So totally up to you. Do not put this card base on your card yet because we're going to be adding these brads and you want those to be hidden, so be careful. Um, these are like a dollar store pair of scissors that came in a set of three. Just so you guys know, they may be sharp, I don't know. Here's a big one, here's a little one. And I think there was like a medium sized one that came with it. Super, super dirty, cheap. I don't even know where I got them. Maybe I maybe I spent more than a dollar. Maybe they were like three ninety nine. They were they were nothing. So you don't have to um you you don't have to use special awesome you know high price scissors. Okay, the next thing that we're gonna do is work on the circles, and you need one brown circle that's larger than the white circle. And like I said, I'm using a three inch circle for my large one. So if you want, you know, you want to stick with the ones that I'm using, my large circle is three inches. Three inches around. I'm using this tool if you need to use a cup or a tape roll or whatever you need to do to make yours. Just go ahead. And while I'm doing this, I'm going to pull out my white to do the smaller circle. And my smaller circle is going to be a two and a half inch circle. So a three inch and a two and a half. And I'm just gonna go ahead and mark those right away and then we're gonna cut those out. Tammy says if you don't have, or if you don't wanna use the scissors, if you use a piece of sandpaper to do the edges, that works for her. So try that out. If you're looking for another alternative, thank you, Tammy, for the suggestion. So we've got, let me see if I can get these in here while I'm cutting. We've got the base, and now we're working on the window. Absolutely, if you have a punch or die system that can cut these out for you, lickety split, Go for it. I'm doing this so that I can show that even beginners who can't afford a cuddle bug or a um, electric machine 
that they too can make fancy cards and not have to break the bank doing it. So as you become um, more and more advanced in your crafting, of course, then you can decide what you can't live without and what you can live without and make better choices in the crafting supplies that you do buy. And that's kind of the whole premise of my channel, is to make this stuff easier for beginners to get access to creating this stuff without them thinking that they have to spend thousands of dollars on fancy um, machines and stuff to get the same look that we get. You know, those of us who have been around the block a couple of times and we already have a bunch of machines. And maybe they're at the stage where they can only hope to have one, you know. Ah, cheers, Mary. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. Cheers, my friend. So glad you're here. I'm so glad you're all here. I did a different color on my nails today. My husband said that it was it looked red to him. Like seriously, that is not red. I don't know why my why is my zoom not working today? Maybe my computer doesn't like this color either. There we go. So it's it's literally supposed to be a pink. But it's got like an orange shimmer in it, and then I added glitter over the top, so that kind of changed it a little bit too. But my goodness, if you guys saw my blue, hey Deb, you're not late. We've just gotten started. All you missed was us creating this space right here. Now we're working on the circle part. So I had blue on. I don't. Even, I don't have it out, or I'd show you guys. But it was a blue like smurf color like maybe this blue like a dark blue um when i rubbed that off which this has never happened to me in what the last five years i've been doing my nails it literally turned all my fingers blue i look like a smurf it took like the whole day and you can still see in in the edges right here where it's still blue i'm not gonna waste your time doing that but anyway we've got our two circles and they should be offset just a little bit. Now, in the trick and trick of the eye, so that you don't have to do, if you, so that you don't have to do this, because this takes even more time. Do you see how we could cut this, and then we'd have to somehow raise that to go over the top of this one, so that it popped up. I hope I might have I might be losing some of you guys, but instead of having to do this trick of the eye, I inked around the edges of this circle to make it look like. This white circle was lit actually literally underneath the brown circle. Coral. Thank you, Mary. I think it looks coral, too. Okay. So I, I might say that again because I'm not sure if you guys all caught that. But this, br this brown that I inked around the edges makes it look like this white um, circle is actually below this circle. When it's not, it's, at, it's literally glued on top. But it doesn't look that way. It looks like the brown one's on. Okay. <laughs> Let's just move on. We're going to make this like two, like one third brown and two thirds blue. With a little bit, like I have dark blue in the in the middle. And I'm going to show you how I got that look. So I'm going to use a little bit of um, tumble glass, which is a light blue. You can use any kind of light blue that you have. And I'm going to switch my tool. I'm going to switch my little thing here. There we go. And I've got two colors on this one, as you'll notice, because these are kind of small. So I'm going to use this side, and I'm going to ink that up in that blue. <clears throat> Pull back in my scratch paper here. And I'm going to ink from the top here down about two thirds or so, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. And you can have that as dark blue or as light blue as you want. This one's really hard to see. So probably on your end, it looks like I don't have any blue on it at all, but I do. And then on the other side, I'm gonna do a brown and this one is brushed corduroy. Oh, that's going to be stinky today. I don't know why. Sometimes it just does that. Well, take my word for it. It's brush corduroy. 
And we're going to put a little bit on that end, and then we're going to start a little bit off. See how it makes those little marks? I just start a little bit off and then go on. And then just blend it in until it gets about to that skyline. doesn't have to be perfect either. This is one of those uh, projects that doesn't have to be super perfect. There we go. So now we've got the sand and the sky. We're going to add a little bit of water in the middle here. I'm going to show you how I did that. We're going to use, we're going to go back to this tumbled glass and we're going to use the edge of this to fill it in. Cheers. Oh, Freedom said, very clever, Jen. It did fool my eye indeed. I'm so glad. So now you learned something today. Super. I'm just going to go across with this. If you guys want me to, like, bring the camera in or bring the camera out, let me know. Uh, I didn't realize it was quite that far away. Let me bring this part in a little bit. I'm just going to use the edge and some of this, you know, just kind of watch Ugh. to put my waves in. So I'm going to put a little bit of, you could use this too as well. I just feel like <clears throat> I'm going to get that darker color like right here. Straight across. See, I just don't get as much dark of a color there. You can either go for a darker blue or use your lighter blue and just put, put those waves in going straight to paper. Now you're going to see that goes really, really straight. So I'm going to take the edge and do a little... A little like U shaped and get these little marks there so that it looks like the water's not even. Whoop, that's a really big wave. And then just go straight across and even it out. You can go back in with your ink and you know whatever you want to do until it gets until it looks like waves to you. I mean that's close enough for me so that's good enough. And that is the end of that one. Now we're going to do what I said. We're going to flip back to that. And bring you out a little bit. We're going to flip back to that darker one, that walnut stain. And this is what we're going to do the edges with. Where I said um, that it's going to look like that one is below that other one. And so you're just going to do this inking around the edge like this. Okay, and I'm pretty heavy handed with it because I want it to look like it's sinking into this piece right here. So, you know, be generous with your ink here. Reload your Whatever kind of tool you're using, your sponge or your um, felt. I had someone tell me, but Jen, felt works so much better. Or felt, or what do they say, a makeup sponge, something like that. I get that. It probably works better for you. But everyone has their own unique way of using tools. And so what's better for you might not be better for someone else. So I never try to presume. I'm just giving you the ideas that I use that work for me, my experience, I've tried other kind of things, and this is what works for me. I'm really, I'm good at using it this way. So I'm going to let that, I'm going to give this a chance to dry. It won't, um, hang on to this stuff. We, we It needs a little bit time to dry. So I'm going to bring that out. We're going to make these two little uh, shells. So you're going to want to bring in a mouse pad or something squishy that you have at home. I'm bringing in my little mouse pad here. And this is where you're going to have to use a little bit of your ingenuity, maybe your drawing skills. This little shell right here is basically just an oblong circle. Like, it's a really wonky circle. Almost like a triangle. So if you're going to... And I'll tell you about how big it is in case you guys are wondering. It's like no bigger than... An inch by an inch. So I'm just going to say, like, 
uh, maybe I want it about that big and then I'm going to bring it down a little bit and then round out the bottom. So it's almost like it's almost like a triangle but you're rounding out the sides and the tip is longer. These two sides are longer than the short side and then you're just going to round them out. So let me bring you in again because you know some of you guys are going to be like I ain't got no drawing skills Jen. Help me. Help me. Help me. Um, <laughs> Let me bring you in and show you what I'm talking about. So it's like you have a, a triangle, right? And you have a short side here and two long sides. And you're just going to round off these sides and then round off this side. Okay? That's, that's the best I can do to kind of show you what I'm talking about. So, but on the top here, you're going to want these to be bumpy. Bump, 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 bump. Not totally noticeable, but do you see here where I've got a little bit of a bump here? You know, play around with it. It's not hard at all. Um, I'm just going to cut one out here. I'm going to do some bumps, bump, 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 and then I'm going to bring this down, okay, into almost like a triangle, you know, round off the bottom, and then bring it back up. Now, is this one going to be the same exact as that one? No, because they're shells. You know, they're all going to look different. Okay, so if you want it a little bit smaller, you just trim some more off. And if you want it a little bit bigger, uh, you could start over. It's totally up to you, however you want yours to look. I'm going to trim mine up just a little bit. I want that to be gone. That's about it. So that's the first shell. Hi, Tracy. It's my first time watching your video. and you're That's awesome. We're so glad you're here. Hello! Like a guitar pick! Thank you! Who said that? Who said that? Mary! Clever girl. Okay, and the other one that we're drawing, or we're, I just kind of hand cut, is, um, but I'll give you kind of a little, how do we do this? Tutorial here, quick. Is this one? That looks like a really long <laughs> triangle. It's almost like, okay, so this one, let me just move this over. So this one is more like like a rounded base and then a tall triangle, like a piece of pizza, okay? But you're going to make a really big bump and then a smaller bump and then a smaller bump and then a smaller bump and then a tip, okay? A really big bump, a smaller, smaller, smaller tip. That's it. Okay, so rounded base, like a piece of pizza, and a big bump, and a little bump, and a little bump, and a little bump, and a tip. And then I'm going to go back from the top. I'm going to make my tip there, and then make that bump match, make that bump match, that bump, that bump, and that bump. This might take you a couple tries. Like, that just looks like a little poo emoticon to me right now. Maybe, I'm going to flip it over because I just think maybe it's just a little bit too wide. So I'm just going to maybe make this side a little bit smaller and this side a little bit smaller. And to me, that, that looks a lot closer. So I'm going to go with that. Now, they might not look like shells to you, like, right off the get-go. So let me just back it out up here. And once you get your shells cut out, now we're going to add some stuff that's really going to make them. Because when I first cut mine, I thought, oh, my gosh, Ooh, no one's going to follow me. <laughs> They're all going to think I'm nuts because it looks horrible. But trust me, when you add the color and stuff that I'm going to show you now, they're going to come to life. So put your two shells on your squishy mat. This is when you, where you need the squishy mat for sure. I want to bring you in, but not too crazy in. Okay. This is where you're going to need your stylus or your bone folder. And if you don't have one, if you don't have one, uh, use the end of a pencil or any kind of a tool, a tweezers or something that you have that's blunt on the end that's not going to rip your paper. And the first thing we're going to do is this one is we're going to make a, a mark going like a U, a half a U going back and forth. Heading towards this tip, but not, not all the way. And then on the other side, from this side to where in between that bump, 
and I'm going to bring this up to show you if it'll let me. Do you see where there's that U shape? And I'm heading towards this dip, but I'm not going all the way to the end. So this is what we're heading for. The mark, but not all the way to the end, okay? And then bring this one around. And we're kind of curving them a little bit. So I'm going to do the same thing for this other one. And I might not get five. I might only get four in this one. My shell is a little bit different, which is fine. So I only got four this time. Last time I got five. No big deal. And you're just going to want to rub them until they go in a little ways because you want those divots. And I'm going to show you why in just a second. Now with this one, as you, you probably have already guessed, we're kind of kind of match up those um, two bumps on the sides. But we're going to make a, make it in a shape because you want to make them look like they're kind of three-dimensional. So as you go, I want to show you this in here. You're going to want to make them dip down in a little bit of a curve here. If you go straight across, they're just going to look flat. But if you dip down your curve as you go, okay, it's going to make it look rounded. Like it's three-dimensional round kind of thing. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm shooting for here. Just to make those look rounded and to put a divot in between each one of those little parts. So when you're done, you should have, that's really hard to see on white, but do you see where the lines are? There we go. That's what you're heading for. So now I'm going to show you how to ink these guys up. I'm going to back out a tad, just a little bit here. You can ink them any way you want, but I'm going to give you an idea of how I did it. And I want a new, so I want a new one of these. I want a clean one for my blue. It's starting to get a little bit muddy with the brown. I just put my tool on top of a piece of felt from Michael's or Joann's or wherever, and I just go ahead and cut it right along the side. And that's it. That's how I make mine. And you can cut out a whole bunch of them at one time. I did, but I think I've gone through that whole pile. They're gone already. And then I have a whole fresh new one to use. And then as they wear out, that's what I do. I just cut more. So this one is going to be blue, so it matches the blue in our water and on our, um, our sky. But I want it to be, I'm going to be pretty heavy-handed here. And I'm going to start from the edge here. And I'm just going to push down and add color. You can add as much color or as little color as you want, but I'm just going to keep loading it up until I get, until I'm satisfied with the color. That looks pretty good to me. And then I'm going to switch. Now this one, the shell is going to be brown, but I'm not using the dark, dark walnut stain for this one, the one we went around the circle with. I'm, I'm going back to the brushed corduroy. The one that, there we go, brush corduroy. Grab myself another one of these. Oh, that's the one I just used. Here it is. And I'm going to use this side for the brushed corduroy. And to make this look more like 3D, I'm going to start heavy handed on one side and drag it across. So it's a little bit darker on one side than the other side, that makes sense. And that's it. That's all I'm going to do. That's I'm done inking. Okay, so we've got this one that's got the lines going up and down, and this one's got them going across with a little bit darker brown on one side. And now we're going to use the white gel pen to add our details. I'm going to use this one. I always start it on my finger just in case there w the air would have dried up it up on the edge and to get it flowing and I'm going to I'm going to give you kind of a tip that if you use this 
on your water where the water was really, really wet ink, this isn't going to do well. So it does much better on, um, does much better if you don't push real hard, and it does much better if the ink is a little, has some time to dry. Okay, so right here I'm just going to do, somebody said bring it, bring it in, so I'm going to bring it in for you guys. There we go. I think that's as, almost as far in as I can get. And I'm just going to very lightly go up and down. It's still a little wet. And I use my finger as a back backdrop. And I go back and forth. Kind of like little V's is what I'm doing. And then connect a couple little upside down V's. You know, however you want to do them. I mean, it doesn't really matter how you do them because they look like they're kind of far away. Yeah, it's still, my ink is really still wet. But if you go over them afterwards when it dries, um, I go back in after it's done and I add more white over the top of it. You can do that too. Roll it back and forth until the ink comes out. And then we got some really cool looking waves. And then come in and do these. Okay. The lighter you push, the more this tends to roll and let the ink free full flow out. Okay. The harder you push, the more it just kind of delves into itself. So you're going to want to make those corners and then come up from the bottom and make your little curve marks. And you're just going to kind of have to watch me. I don't know how to really explain this, but the ones on the outside you want to curve in. And then they get a little bit straighter as they come in towards the middle. And that makes your shell look a lot more realistically curved. And then the next thing with this one where we put those little divots, that's where you're going to put your white gel pen on these. Put a lot of ink on this one. Ooh, there we go. Try less pressure instead of more pressure. Sorry, I was out of screen there. Try less pressure instead of more. It lets that ball just kind of leak ink more and roll. Uh, I don't know how to explain it, but otherwise, if you have time to let everything dry thoroughly, sometimes that works too. And this will just wash off with a little bit of soap and water. So no big deal there. Now we've got those pieces, we've got that piece, and we've got our base, right? And we're going to put this together so we get a card that looks like that. Oh, you know what? The one thing that I forgot. I went ahead and used my Silhouette Cameo to cut this anchor. So what we need to do is we need to make our own anchor too. What I would suggest you do if you're not a drawer, because I'm not, I am going to draw this out and just make one. But if you're not really good at drawing, go ahead and, and look up anchors, type in anchors on Google, bring up an anchor and then maybe print it out and then cut around it or print it out and trace it. And that way you can get yours. I'm just going to follow this with my eye. It's got a circle on the top. And then it kind of goes straight out. And it comes back in. I uh, should probably bring you in. So if you're fall if you want to try to follow along, you can, but this is no big deal. And then it kind of just kind of goes straight down and then starts strutting outwards. It makes like a J and a backwards J. And then a little arrow. And 
and then it comes back down the J and kind of curves down and makes a tip. And that's probably good enough. Just eyeballing it, just check out something online. Make your circle bigger rather than smaller because you're going to want to take a punch or a scissors and cut a hole in there for your, uh, for your, what do you call it, your little piece of string here. So you're going to want to make, make sure you have a place for that hole. If you don't want to do the, that hole, if that's like too, like, whatever, um, just put the piece of rope right on top of this part right here. And it'll look like it's coming out of there. You don't actually even have to make a hole if that's just too much for you. Let that part go. Okay, and now, unfortunately, because I didn't think of this ahead of time, you'll have to watch me fussy, kit, fussy cut this one, too. So maybe while I'm fussy cutting, it'll give you a chance to kind of catch up here. Now, I'm not going to have to worry about uh, cutting, or I mean, sorry, erasing these lines because I'm just going to flip it over and use the other side. And so we will see how... I'm really glad I didn't use a super thick black paper because this paper is really kind of, it's thinner and it's very forgiving. Wow, I'm just so impressed that there's so many people here on a Mother's Day that came to join us. Like, thanks so much for coming. So how many of you guys have already celebrated um, Mother's Day and it's no no big whoop, I mean you had time now, or how many of you guys just don't celebrate today, maybe you guys pick a different day? Um, I didn't get a chance, my parents live like uh, several hours from me, and so I didn't get a chance to see my mom, so we're just going to pick a day in the end of June and celebrate Mother's Day and Father's Day all together. So that that looks like an anchor, right? Close enough. And I don't have a punch handy, so I'm going to show you how to layer it just right on top of there. We'll glue it down, and it'll be fine. It'll look like it came through there. Da -da -da, let's move this out of the way. All right. So first thing we're going to do now, bring your pieces back in. We're going to glue this piece down to this piece. And if you want to put it on first and double check that your, dark, your edges, edging is dark enough, Go ahead and do that, and if not, then um, double uh, double ink your edge now before you glue this down, because I'm literally going to glue it down. I had my glue bottle standing straight up. Don't do that to yourself. Leave it laying flat on your desk, and then you don't have to wait for your glue to get to the bottom. Okay, and if you use a wet glue, you have time to kind of slide this around and make sure all the it's even on all the sides, how you want it to look. And then we're going to add these faux, um, I think they would be screws. I'm not sure exactly what's on one of those windows. But anyway, we're just going to use our Sharpie to do that. If you have little tiny silver stickers or, you know, uh, copper or other kind of stickers, then go ahead and do that. But here's how I get my screws to look pretty even. The first thing you're going to want to do is um, look at it as like a clock. And you're going to want to do noon, three, six, and nine. You know, approximately. 
And then you're going to want to do one in between, halfway between these two, because that's easier to eyeball. And then halfway in between these two. Same thing here. Same thing here. Okay? If that's all that you want, if you think that's enough, then, you know, stop there. If you want more like mine, then you can do more. I think I'm going to stop there, and I'm going to make mine a little bit wider apart on this card this time, just for something different, and I'm going to stop there. And the other idea I had was that you could take your white gel pen out then, and um, something just fell under my desk. I wonder, is there a kitty in here? No, something just gave way. Just put a little white dot on each one of these to make it look like they're shiny. I didn't do that on the other card, and I wished I had. But it gives it a whole other dimension. It's really cool. So I'm probably going to do that on this one, too. I wish I had in the beginning. Just a little, it's almost like a little dot or a little kind of a line on each one. And that's it. Yeah, I real I like that a lot better. Okay. And then we need to bring in our card base because we're gonna put this all together. So this is an A2 size base. It's half of an eight and a half by eleven sheet of card stock. So it ends up to be four and a quarter by five and a half. My my fingers are dirty. I'm going to get a baby wipe. So I could tell that my fingers were dirty because I got a big old fingerprint right here on my card, which is not a big deal because we're going to cover that up. But I have baby wipes handy all the time. I don't know if you guys do. All right. And that's, I'm going to cover that up. We're going to just put some tape down and this is where, no, we're not. I almost forgot we're going to hide those things. We have to hide our brad. So whatever color brads you have, <clears throat> I'm just going to go ahead and use these kind of off brown ones that I have. If you don't have brads, then you go ahead and just draw four dots in the corner of your paper and make um, fake ones. But if you have the brads, if you only have silver or gold brads or some kind of funky color, just know that you can take um, a tweezers like this, dip this in uh, Versamark, and then dip this into like an embossing powder and heat it and change the color of your brads anytime. So if you only, if you want to save, save on, you know, buying tens different color brads, go ahead and do that. I'm going to take the smaller end of this. You could take the end of your scissors or whatever you have. Actually, I think I'll do my scissors because all you guys have scissors. Decide about where. Make sure you do this far enough in from the corner that when you spread your brad apart in the back that they don't hang off the sides of the paper. So bring it in a little bit and then just poke through. I have this squishy mat underneath here for a reason when I do this because when it goes through, it's going to hit that mat and it's not going to wreck my table or anything underneath. So think about that ahead of time. Go in about, I don't know, how far in is that? If you're a, a measurer, which I'm not, go in about a half an inch. And that way you can just slide your bread in easily. And then when these part in the back like this, you're, they're not going to hang out the edge of the paper. Okay. So go ahead and do that. one in each corner. Fingernail polish would work too, I think. Try it out. Sure, why not? Shelby said, if you only have markers, then top the dots for the brads with glossy accents to simulate a brad. That is a cool idea. Thanks for sharing, Shell. All right. Let's move this out of the way and finish her off. So we're almost out of time.
You can put the tape or the glue of your choice, whatever you have, all the way around your card, a little bit in the middle to hold it down stable, and then put your background on. I'm going to stand up just so that I can look at the top of this and get this in one shot as even as I can, and then just push down. This would be another time that if you really wanted to add that brown ink around the edges, you could. Just go ahead and hold your back away and ink these edges all the way around. I'm not going to. Like I said, I like the white. I'm going to leave mine. This is going to be the next thing we put down, and I'm going to just use ATG. I think the first time I probably used wet glue, but just for time's sake. And it's going to go off the card just a little bit on the right. You don't have to make it off the card. If you're concerned about it not fitting in your envelope, then leave it in the middle of the card or down on the bottom, you know, however you want to do it. And then you can put your shells and your anchor any way you want. So I'm just going to go ahead and say, well, about that looks about good. Put a little bit of glue at the bottom here. A little bit of glue on this one. And then that way I've got some time to kind of manipulate these to the spot that I want them to be. And I let them um, stick up just a little bit on the top so that they have more dimension as well. You can pop dot these, but I just chose not to. But if you want to, okay, so then we got to put the anchor on. Anchor can go wherever you want it to go. Um, since we're going to be making, pretending that this is a faux circle or hole for our thing, I'm going to go ahead and glue the whole thing straight down to the card so it doesn't move around. But if you're not doing that, you can leave it um, popped up three-dimensional like a little bit, but I'm just going to put it straight down. So the last thing we have to add is just that little piece of um, jute or twine or whatever you have. Cut a long enough piece that you can pull it up double. I mean, you don't have to do it that way, but with mine, you can double it up that way and then pull the two through the loop there. Like you're just tying a knot and then pull them straight up. And then depending on how long you want them, you might want to trim it off. And then I just pull it apart to make it get all frayed on the top. And then the bottom, I'm going to cut one side off. And then we're going to pretend this went through there. So I'm just going to cut that bottom off like this. And so that part's going to glue straight to there. I'm going to bring this up. I got fuzz all over the place. But we're pretending that there's a hole there. So we're just going to put this right on top of there. And it's going to look like a full hole. Like it's going to look like it's coming right out of that anchor and you don't even have to make a hole. Do you see that? That's why we didn't fuss with the hole because um, this is just quicker. And so I use, you can use glossy accents, you can use regular wet glue, you can use a hot glue, whatever you feel like you need to. I'm using this. This is like, um, this is a liquid glue. It's like, what do you call it? glossy accents or liquid glass, those type of things that most people have. Um, that kind of glue, I just feel like it stays better. So I'm going to put a little bit on, let's see, the flat side. A little bit here on this side here and a little bit on that part that's touching the paper. And that's it. A little, da a little dabble do ya. And because it's wet glue, you really have to wait for it to dry somewhat before you just let let it go. So while I'm holding this down, I want to thank you guys for coming. <laughs> First and foremost, it's um, one minute to three. So in respect of your time, we're going to wrap it up here. And um, definitely if you want the feel of community and you want to learn more from crafters, or um, give inspiration to crafters, come join us over at Quality Crafts on Facebook. If you look up the group, it's going to ask you three simple questions before you enter, just so that we can sort out whether whether or not you're um, 
a spammer or a scammer kind of a thing. It's a it really and it also helps us get to know you a little bit before you come come into the group. Also, uh, down below in the description box, you're gonna find. Um, three links at the top of the description box. One will be for my store, qualitycrafts.com. One will be for my Patreon so that you can pledge if you want to join in um, helping me create the passion of spreading art to beginner through the advanced by doing and preparing and researching all of these um, awesomely easy tutorials that everyone and anyone can follow using practically no tools at all. And then there'll be one to the Facebook group. So if you can't find us, that link is always down below. I think that it'll probably stay, but I'll give it a little bit more time to dry. But there you have it. That's coming off of there, and then it practically mimics that card. And my inker doesn't look too bad. It's a little bit heavier, <laughs> a little bit fatter than the other one, but we've got two cards. So this one I made up ahead of time, and this one we did together today. When I saw this card, I just absolutely knew I had to show you guys how to do it. It just... It looked really difficult, but I knew I could make it easy for you, and that's what I'm always looking for. I have just a mess. I have to clean this up before I can think straight. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. You can find me on Facebook. The quickest way to get a hold of me is Facebook private message or instant message, however you call it, on your end. Um, I'm definitely in the trenches with you guys every day. So if you want to talk or you want to chat, just go ahead and private message me. You could send me an email, but that's a slower way of getting a hold of me. Um, yep, the Circle um, Stencil was is made by Fiskars. I think they still sell these. Seems I got mine wherever I did. Garage sale or sale somewhere for $4. But I'm sure you can find them. Maybe find them less than that. I'm not sure. Um... Fiskars brand. Here it says. You can see it right here. Fiskars Circles. If you're looking for this one in particular, it's the number on it is Circles-14850. Alrighty then. You guys really enjoy this if you do don't forget to give me a thumbs up in the bottom if you're watching this archived if you're watching it live now i i don't know if the thumbs up shows up for you guys or if you have to go back in but i really appreciate that that helps me out on the youtube and um thank you guys so much for coming i really appreciate it lots of people are in the chats um saying thank you for the card um the thumbs up helps me uh know which ones um that which of my videos that you really, really like. And the other thing that you can do for me is share the video if you enjoy it. Because the more people that see it and the more count that I get on um, YouTube, the more it helps me become more independent and sustainable in this so that I can do it full time. And that's what my goal is, so that I can spread this love all the time and that it would be, um, it would just be my full time thing. So um, thanks again for coming. Definitely check us out on Facebook because we would love to have you in our drama and commitment free group. It's super fun. Check out the storequalitycrafts.com and I can't wait to see you guys next video. Drama and commitment free group. It's super fun. Check out the store quality.